Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the uh, latest episode of the Level Up Podcast. And I've got a good friend and great agent uh, with me today, Mr. Abe Safa with Century 21, the Harrelson Group. Abe, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Brendan. How are you? I'm real good, real good. I'm glad to have you have you back on here and uh, sitting in. Greg's on location somewhere, so here we are. Yep, we'll, we'll do the work while he's gone. Exactly, exactly. That's what we do. So, um, hey, today our topic, which I think is just timely right now, is um, talking about there. There's a there's a shift going on right now in most markets that I'm aware of. And maybe, you know, somebody that's listening is saying, no, we're exactly the same we've been in the last 90 days. Well, whether it's already happened or it's going to happen, this is an industry that continually shifts from one market to another. So it's a timely conversation because if it isn't happening right now, it's probably going to in the short term. So we're talking about what do, you know, we'll use the term top producers only because typically top producers are doing a lot of business. They've systematized their business. And so that gives you some credibility. And for those of you that don't know Abe, how many, how many years have you been in business now, Abe? This is my seventh year. Seventh full year. And I know, you know, you started from completely different industry, um, didn't have any direct, you weren't, it wasn't like you were an insurance salesman or door-to-door salesman um, and came into the business. And by year three, you were doing hundred plus transactions. And now you sell 160, 170 properties year after year and are doing multiple other things that are, you know, other income streams. So you're qualified, in my opinion, to talk about, you know, from a, from a high volume top producer type standpoint, when you see things that are getting a little bit different in a market, what are, what are some of the things that you're working on right now to insulate yourself or, you know, ideally be able to take advantage of a changing market? I mean, I, th- I think it's um, I think it's a couple of things, Brendan. Number one, you you have to adapt, right? You have to be able to adapt. So you can't be so firm and so structured in the old ways that you're not willing to change. But so so, but what I mean by that is is you definitely want to monitor what's going on, what the trends are, um, so you're at least aware of where things are heading. But even more importantly, is when when things are starting to change and the more drastic the changes in in this industry what i've seen is the more you have to go back to the basics mm-hmm. okay i mean there's certain things that just work and they've worked year after year market after market they just they just work uh we're in a sales business we're in a people business the more people you talk with concerning real estate the more business you're going to do mm-hmm. so when i start seeing things change i start thinking about okay what are the basics what got me to the level that I'm at right now, and I make sure I double down on those things. Mm-hmm. Um, so to start off by, by kind of putting that out there, um, you know, I think it always goes back to the basics. What are you doing on a consistent basis that got you to the level that you are right now? Yeah, that's interesting because I, I I'd be willing to bet you could go back to probably between March and May or June in 2020. When um, we were in another shift, you know, whatever the market was up until February of 2020, then the next 60 days, there was a clear, concise and fast shift in with COVID and nobody really knew what was going on. And I remember talking about we've got to go back to the basics. We got to, you know, what what was working before? What did we get off track on? Now we got to get back on it. And so now here we are again in what that just, you know, that just proves that the stuff that works is what we do day in and day out. And it's never going to stop. It's just never going to stop. One of the things when you wrote that down, you, you mentioned like paying attention to kind of what's going on. And, and what I wrote down was top producers right now that are paying attention to the possibility of shifts in the market, or they already know, like it's a matter of time. And there's usually some things that let me know ahead of time that it's coming. What they're doing is they anticipate conversations will change. So when they see some things indicating maybe there's a market change or shift coming up, then they anticipate that conversations are probably going to change. And I believe that I know we are having a lot of conversations about, okay, well, how do we need to change up what we're saying? How do we need to communicate this transition, whatever it may be? How do we need to... um, get better at communicating with the buyers and sellers when things are a little bit more uncertain. You yeah, see I mean, that? I, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I think I think our listening has to get a whole lot better right now, mm. right? Because again, so doing the amount of deals that we do, being on the front lines like we are, constantly researching the market and, and what's happening, looking at numbers all the time, there are things that we see that the consumer does not see yet, right? There's things that we see that other agents in our market don't even see yet. So I think we have to be careful on how we present that to the consumer. So I think listening becomes even more important right now when it comes to the conversation shifting. You know, you can't just come on and say, oh, you know, Mr. Seller, yeah, the, the market's completely softened up, things have changed, yeah. when it, they might not have a clue where we are. So yeah. I think listening to where they are, listening to what their take on what's happening in the market right now, and kind of slowly going into the conversation, I think becomes really important. This, this early on in the stage. Now, once the media starts going crazy with all the, the headlines and, 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 and scared titles and all that stuff, and, and the consumer, everybody thinks that the world is ending, then, then the conversations you know, change again as well. But I think yeah. right now there's a little bit of a window between what you're seeing as a reality and what the consumer sees as a reality. Yeah, and that's a great, um, that, that's a, a great point about why, one of those benefits that when you talk to a lot of people and you have a lot of conversations about real estate, you get a real insight into what the consumer is thinking as a whole. So if you can imagine, if you go out and you talk to you know, 15 people a month, then your sample size of what people's perception of what's going on in the market is very small. If you talk to 15, 20 people a day for 20, 25 days a month, then you're getting, you know, you're, you're starting to recognize trends. You're starting to recognize the themes of what people are talking about. And that's what you're, that's what you're referring to in, is the insight in the market um, that, that, you know, ahead of time, you get a little bit of a glimpse into the, in the future. Uh, I wrote down one of the things that I'm doing right now is over the last 18 months, 24 months, strong sellers market, continual appreciation. So I talked to tons of people that had said, you know what, I know it's really good, but you know, I'm waiting because, and the because might've been, I'm waiting to get it to a certain number. I'm waiting until I can find this other property. There was a bunch of because, but I'm waiting because. Now those I'm waiting people are like my, not my number one target. A lot of them I tagged in my database and just tagged, I'm waiting. And knowing that I could go and go back to whenever there was a shift to go back and run that group and now pick up the phone because I have something new to tell them. Like, hey, guys, did you, did you make a decision? There's a couple of things I want to update you in the market and then find out if they're still waiting. So I think that's one of the, you know, you're a big proponent on seg segmenting your database. That's one of the segments that I, I put together just knowing that I want to talk to those people again. Like, I don't want them having in the bottom of this big bucket. I want to know who those people were that said, I'm waiting for something to change because when it changes, I want to be there. There's no question. And that's, that's precisely it. There's a, I think there's a bottleneck right now of, of sellers. I think there's a lot of people that were sitting on the sidelines that were waiting for that yeah. perfect moment. Like they might not even know what that perfect moment was, but they surely were not going to sell too early and miss the peak. Right. So yeah, I mean, knowing who they were, having them segmented in your database a certain way, you're having them tagged in a certain way that you can go back and say, okay, let's, let's talk now. Cause we're starting to see these kind of changes in the market. I thought you'd like the, you'd be interested in knowing what I'm seeing right now. Just open up that conversation, start that dialogue. And like you said, see if their motivation changed, see if now is the right time. And, you know, it also goes to, you know, we're talking about sellers, the same thing goes for buyers. There are millions of buyers out there that have been looking Oof. and there's tons of them that missed the opportunity to buy because they kept getting outbid on properties. Don't wait for inventory to grow and then hope that those buyers reach out to you. This is the time to go yeah. back and reconnect with those buyers and let them know, hey, this is what I'm starting to see in the market. So get ready, get your pre-qual ready, go back to your lender and see, okay, we've had some appreciation, interest rates have doubled, right? So do you still qualify for the same uh, price home. Yeah. Go ahead and get all that cleaned up and start the conversation with them. So this way they're you're at the top of the list of which agent they're going to work with when they get ready to buy and let them know inventory is coming. It's just right around the corner and now they could pull the trigger on, on it. So same thing for, for buyers as well. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. So one of the things we know um, from being through multiple, you know, multiple shifts in, in different markets is the way or, or the times that you actually gain market share 
as an agent or as a team or as a company brokerage, you gain market share when things are, when there's a little less confidence in the market. Because, you know, right now I would imagine that most markets probably have their peak or close to their peak of licensed real estate agents all going for the same amount of transactions that, you know, maybe were a couple of years ago when they had three quarters that many agents. So there's more hands in the pie to, so to speak. So when there's a shift, there's an opportunity to actually gain some market share. So what are you doing to make sure that you're positioned to, to be able to gain that market share that, that will likely be available, whether it's this year, next year, you know, we're not putting a time frame on it, but we know at some point there'll be that opportunity. So what are some of the things that you're putting in place in, in your business? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, first and foremost, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting more aggressive. I'm going on the offense as opposed to going on a defense, right? So if you, if you do the research, it's not just real estate. If you do the research on some of the best companies in the world were started during a recession, mm. were started during a hard time. Some of the best companies in the world built market share during the worst of times. So this is a time where you don't want to slam on the brakes and get in fear mode. You don't want to freeze, okay? This is an opportunity. Um, there's going to be many agents that freeze. There's going to be many agents. If this does dry up a little bit, if, if the number of transactions go down, which some people are predicting, there's going to be some agents that don't make it. So you're going to have less competition. So this is, you've got to change your mindset and be thinking about this as an opportunity. Mm. Okay. Now, of course, I'm not saying go out there and just, just act like nothing is happening, right? Take a look at your expenses, certain things that you can live about without, and you can actually scale back on some of your spending, then, then, then do that. But you got to differentiate between an expense and an investment. So to me, lead generation is always an investment. So what I don't want to do is scale back on my lead gen right now, whether it's buyers or sellers thinking, oh, my God, I can't spend this money because what if the market goes down? This is the time to actually ramp it up. Mm -hmm. You're going to need more leads. Okay. If the price points go down, if the average sales price goes down, you have to do more transactions to make the same amount of money. Okay. Yep. If the market does dry up a little bit, you're going to have to talk to more people to do the same number of deals. So, so take a look at your business, scale back some expenses where you need to be prepared, get lean. Okay. But when it comes to things like lead generation, you need to slam on the gas and, and go full speed ahead and, and seize the opportunity right now that we're about to have in this industry. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's good. That's good advice. And so if somebody's out there listening right now, I can imagine that, you know, where you're sitting and what you see every day right now may not even bring the, you know, the notion of uh, a softer market or different prices or um, at any level of terms like recession and things like that. That's okay. Understand though, this topic is about what our top producing agents doing right now. So whether or not any of that stuff happens or it doesn't happen is totally irrelevant. Listen to what Abe just said and what we're talking about in terms of what we're doing, because imagine that it does something like that does happen. He's prepared. He's going to be prepared for any changes that happen in the market. So he's going to be able to continue on, not have gaps in his business, continue to have a full pipeline and continue to do deals and gain market share. Now, imagine that it doesn't happen. And a lot of people, I think, experience this in the 20 spring 2020 through summer of 2021, where they got maybe a little bit complacent. We're like, man, I don't know what's going on. Let me just kind of back off and yeah. see, you know check things out for a while. Wait. Well, by the time that they figured out, man, I got to get back in business, people had blown by it because those people had gone, you know what? I'm going to be here whether or not Whatever happens, I'm putting things in place today for the worst case scenario. And when the worst case scenario we thought turned into like a record 24 months, right. that's why so many people, their business went through the roof. So it's not about trying to predict exactly what's going to happen. It's about preparing and then being okay with whatever the result is because you're in a position to grow. Yeah, I almost forgot about the beginning of COVID. It seemed like it was so long ago. But yeah, yeah it, it was a shift and we're kind of, we, we're doing the same things that we're talking about doing now. Right. Back to so base. Yeah, Look at expenses. Yeah. And, and it's not like, it's not like this is only going to work if the market shifts. If the market continues to stay the way it is and get better, this is actually going to help you even more. 
That's right. So these are things that, that are going to work no matter what the market does. Right? Yeah. It, it's not going to hurt you. And, and this is a, you know, if I look back over 16 years, most people would look and say, well, you had the 2008 crash and then you had COVID. Well, I've had this conversation in, in this type of prep work probably six or seven times because there were different things that like indicated there might be something changing here. So it just refocuses you on what you should be doing. And then regardless of what happens, you're either prepped and ready to go or you're prepped, ready to go. It never happened. And then it's like phew, you get this little boost and then you actually pick up some market share. Um, one of the other things I wrote down was future pacing your clients right now. And it goes back to one of the, you know, early when we talked about conversations, when you can see that things are changing, potentially could change, and you're looking at some of the metrics and then you go, okay, I need to probably start working on some of the conversations. One of the conversations that you need to work on with your buyers and sellers is that future pacing conversation of what happens when we get to the actual, you know, the real part of the transaction. For the sellers, it's like, what can I expect? What do you expect when we get on the market? So that they're clear on what you think is happening, what you expect to happen. And then when you go back to them and need to update them, it's not like, you know, a complete surprise. So for example, if I'm talking to a seller right now, it's changed. The conversation's changed a little bit than it was than different than it was six months ago, because right now, not every property that I put on the market is getting five or six offers and 18 showings in the first three days. Some of them are taking a week or two weeks to sell. And so if I don't have that, that conversation up front, my seller may be expecting 18 showings, three days, multiple offers, 10% over asking price. And if I don't deliver that, it's going to be, they're looking at me for that. So future pace in the sellers and then in the buyers, same thing is being clear on what's happening in the market. And, you know, they may be thinking, well, I hear there's a shift or there's more inventory because the interest rates are up. I should be able to go in 20% under these sellers ready to give deals. Eh, you might have to have that conversation with the buyers too. So that future pacing conversation is just so important because when you talk to people about what hap could happen in the future, then you're seen as their partner, their guide. And then the opposite of that is when you don't talk to them about things that you know, and they come and ask you about them, it always kind of seems like you're making excuses or you're trying to backpedal. Be upfront with people, tell them what they can expect. And then, you know, then you're, you're in it together. The, the, that would, I mean, this is such a big deal. Future pacing, setting expectations is so critical, no matter what the market is, right? You have to make sure you're on the same page with your client. Now, when you have uncertainty like we have right now, we have a lot of volatility, a lot of things that people are just not sure about what's happening. Um, it becomes even more important because you don't know what the seller is thinking. Like they're thinking their, their neighbor across the street put their home on the market and sold it in six minutes and had 12 offers. Yeah, right? three months ago. But three months ago, right. Yeah, so it could be a totally different market right now. So you, you, you have to have to future pace people, set the right expectations. Not only is it going to make your life a whole lot easier, you end up looking like, man, this guy really knew exactly what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Everything that happened so far is exactly what Brendan told me was going to happen. You know, so I, I, it's crucial to do that right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, the, the key is just really being plugged into not only what's going on with, uh, with the actual market and knowing your specific market, because they're all local. You know, you can't read the headlines and the national news and, and predict what's going to happen in your local market. So being plugged in there and also being plugged in to conversations like this, because there is there's there's probably no better resource um, for going through changes in different markets than being able to talk with people and listen to people and hear from people who've already been through it. You know, there's a this market cyclical. It's always going to be or this industry. And so being able to plug in and, and understand what people are doing to prepare and then emulating that is a whole lot easier than guessing on your own. And, um, you know, then, then trying to, you know, you're disappointed when it doesn't happen or you're stressed out because you don't know the moves to make. So um, there's a lot of people that have been through different cycles and, um, you know, they've kind of gone out ahead of you and done some scouting. And, and um, that's why we, 
continue to try to uh, to give as much knowledge as we can to you guys. So, Abe, great conversation, and um, I appreciate uh, appreciate all you do for us. And if people that are listening don't know how to get a hold of you, maybe share that and um, give us a, a little bit of uh, some information also on you know where you see on on my screen, real estate sales solutions, um, what you guys are doing out there. Yeah. So again, my name is Abe Safa, S-A-F-A. You can find me on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, so Real Estate Sales Solutions is a coaching company um, that, that, that Greg Harrelson and myself um, and, and Brendan are, are out there pushing out content to help agents become more productive, become top producers, really, really be successful in this industry. So there, there's, there's actual... Uh, videos and, and courses you could take that are just one-offs that you can buy. And there's also uh, recurring coaching programs like Agent Success Academies is probably our most popular one uh, where it's a, it's a very small monthly fee, um, but we, we deliver content that helps you not only survive these types of market shifts or changes, but also helps you thrive no matter what's happening. Uh, and it's a weekly coaching call that we do. Um, so re relevant content uh, uh, that's that's really powerful to help you in this industry. So so check out Real Estate Sales Solutions, a bunch of stuff on there. Um, if there's anything I could do to help you out, reach out to me on Facebook. It's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Yeah, outstanding. Thank you. And uh, also, guys, on, on Real Estate Sales Solutions, there's, there's uh, as Abe mentioned, the paid courses. There's one-off courses you can buy. There's a lot of free content on there, too. So check that out because it'll give you an idea of, you know, our style and the things that we coach our agents on. And it's something that we make available um, to people outside of, uh, outside of our offices, just because the questions and the demand has always been there. So until next time, um, have a great uh, upcoming week and we'll talk to you soon. And please uh, continue to like, subscribe and, and give us some feedback on these. If there's other topics you want us to cover, we'd love to make sure that we're hitting the, hitting the topics and the subjects that you want to take you from agent to entrepreneur. So Abe, thanks again. And we'll talk to you soon.